Are habits a bad thing? I'm Lisa from Optimum Health and that's what I'm going to be talking about in this video but more specifically how I think habits can actually really help you to achieve what you want to achieve particularly when it comes to your health, fitness and well-being. Now I think it's interesting that generally the word habits has become synonymous with the phrase bad habits but that's not necessarily the case. If you think about brushing your teeth Without really much conscious thought, you will factor into your day two minutes in the morning, two minutes in the evening to brush your teeth because you, you know it um, is good for not only your teeth health but your mouth health and you've just got used to doing it and you're motivated to do it because you don't want to have bad breath. So that has all the constituents of a good habit. But how do we apply that to other areas of our life to achieve what we want in terms of movement, what we eat and drink, and even how we approach things with our thoughts as well? And this is why good habits are almost an essential part of your well-being journey. So let's just have a look at that in terms of a picture because you need three key, three key things to establish a good habit and different people will come at this in different ways. Again, I tend to draw on um, the information from Stephen Covey's fabulous book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. I've read it about four times now and I get something new out of it every time I read it. So it's well worth a read as I throw my pens across the floor. I will get that one back because it's a colour that I do want to use. So when it comes to habits, there are three things that we want to look at. Knowledge, skill and motivation. But, but what do we actually mean by that? So with knowledge... It's what do we need, what do we need to do? So maybe you're thinking you need to eat better. What does eat better mean? How is that going to uh, manifest itself? How are you going to how are you going to buy the food to make sure you're eating better? How are you going to cook it? Do you like cooking? Do you not like cooking? All of these things have to come into the what, but more importantly is understanding why that's important. So the two key questions for knowledge when we're establishing any habit, whether it's, it's to do with, well, any area of your life at all, but what is it you need to do? Why is it important? And with, with all my clients, I like to understand, or importantly than that, I like them to understand why it's important to them. So often we look at this in terms of goal setting and anybody can say, I want to I want to drop a dress size. I want to, I just, you know, I want to lose weight. Something quite vague. Um, but again, the more specific we can get on what you want to achieve, but why that's important to you. How is that going to make you feel relative to how you feel now? Why is that important to you? Um, if we can tap into the why, then that really helps your overall understanding of what needs to be done but also the impetus to actually do something about it. So then when we look at the skill, that's the how. I should put question marks on all of these, shouldn't I, if I'm going to be grammatically correct. So if knowledge is the what and the why, then skill is how. And sometimes this requires completely new skills, so we have to learn them. How are you going to learn them? How are you going to do what you need to do? So it could be... Uh, learning how to do certain exercises at home in a gym or in any other setting. Maybe if it's related to your food, it's about how you're going to cook. If you don't cook at the moment, how can you learn? If you don't want to learn, how are you going to get that, those uh, nutrient-dense meals on your plate? So the skill is the how, whereas the knowledge is the what and the why. Now, at the bottom circle, I put motivation. In a way, motivation is a little bit of a dirty word. People have come to think that they, they need motivation to be able to achieve things. In reality, your motivation is going to come and go. We need to be able to traverse those fluctuations in motivation, which is again why your why is so important so that we are making the choices to support what we're trying to achieve, whether that motivation is there or not. 
So motivation, let's say, call that desire. And the desire might not be to do the particular habit, the desire might be around achieving that end result. And again, I'm very keen for um, the ladies that I work with to link that to some level of performance. Um, now that might be physical performance in a gym, more likely it's performance in their lives. So having enough energy to get through the day, um, being able to manage their menstrual cycle without feeling completely drained, understanding what their body needs as they transition towards menopause and understanding that what they do will influence how they feel. So they have, you know, they, they really want to help themselves. They've, they've understood how they can do it, they know their why, and this is what they really want. So I think that's the other key thing in here, is what do you want? Do you know? Is it specific? When do you want it by? Because again, this is a key thing when we're looking at this. Yes, we'd all love to be a size X next week, that's not realistic. It might not even be realistic for you to be that size in six months time. It might be in a year's time, but we have to under, understand that time frame and work accordingly to manage your expectations. Expectations and motivation can often vie each other off, but that's another video. So when we're looking to establish good habits, what is it that you want to do? Why is that important to you? How are you going to do it? And why do you want it? Now, what is it that you actually want? What is the end result? And when we get all of those three, three things overlapping, we can start to establish a habit. Something that when that motivation isn't there, or when we're at the point in our cycle where everybody could just quite frankly do one and we'd be quite happy that we can still do what needs to be done maybe it's on a different level but we still have that impetus to go forward and support ourselves because we know what we know why we know how to do it and we've actually understood what we want and why that's important to us as well so does that help to frame things does it confuse things is there a part of this matrix that you've perhaps just not thought about when it comes to your own health and well-being, and how are you going to fill in that gap? Are you just going to take some time and write it out? So we know that if you hand write it out, there's a there's a, a better link to help your brain process what's going on. Or do you feel completely lost by all this? Do you start off on things and they fall by the wayside? Is it actually because one of these elements is missing? And do you know which one? And if you don't have any clue at all, feel free to get in touch and just let me know what is it that you're struggling with? What influence is that having in you, on your life? What difference would it make if you could sort that out? And just start to answer those questions for yourself. May in itself answer some of these and help you to establish good habits. But if you would like help, then please do get in touch. I would love to hear from you. And I'd love to hear if you found this useful as well.